Divine Truth Discussions – informal group and individual discussions with Jesus and Mary about various topics and issues. Jesus and Mary have personal informal discussion about factors affecting the quality of spirit discussions. They also reflect on the prior discussion with Mark, who was a 50-year-old Australian station owner who was accidentally shot dead in 1984. This was recorded on 24th of November 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. You did pretty well there, babe. Well, a bit tough staying in there with his feet. That was really hard at the beginning. Oh my goodness. Oh, can I ask you some questions? Sure. So, when I do mediumship, yeah, like you know, I. It's so much feelings, right? Yeah. That's the, it's not like I get a picture or even words. Yeah. And when I'm conveying stuff, I'm using, I can't say I'm choosing words because I'm not thinking, oh, what word? No, they're but, choosing the words for you. Yeah, the word comes, but it's very, very emotional. Like yeah. it comes from their emotion. Yeah. It's not like I'm hearing them say the words and I'm saying the words or something like that. Yeah. Um, so that, that's my way of expressing them, but... Well, no, they're expressing themselves through you. Are they? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but of course they are. Because yeah. it's, pretty, it's pretty accurate, like from what I could feel from him. Mm. Maybe there, was some, there were a few things that I have a bit of a doubt about. About things? Well, if we, if we ask uh, Bob to come... And ask him how he ask him how. Um, what was his name? The Mark. I Mark. Think. How Mark died. Did he get shot by his friend? He did get shot, but not not purposely by his friend. It was an accident. Yeah. That's all true. Yeah. But what with what gun? And where? With a shotgun? Correct. Yeah. And where? Where in his body or where? Yeah, where in his body. I don't know, I, I, like up here. Yeah, it went through, here. up through the middle of his body, hit right. through his stomach and up through, out. Yeah. But it didn't enter, it exit his back. Yeah. 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 So it was a bit more of a horrific death than he was describing. I had this is what. So they said. Yeah. So I was. This is what <coughs> I was wondering about at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But it was what he wished to believe at that point. He was describing what he wished to believe at that point. Yeah. Right. Because the images I was getting from him at the point was a shotgun through the stomach and up through through the stomach through the high part of his stomach and up. Up. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they were sitting down on the thing, and he, the guy dropped it, the shotgun, yes, and triggered it, and it was laying almost flat. But he was they were both sitting on the cab. Ah, uh, mm. yeah, I couldn't. It seemed like they weren't actually they weren't driving shooting. or shooting. They when were it drinking. Happened. They were drinking. Yeah, and I got the the message, feeling, image that not an image, but just the feeling that he he remembered. Split second, his mate dropping the gun. Yes. And then... And then after that, it was what he wanted to believe. Yes. Then he couldn't even... He was so distressed, he couldn't even remember. Well, one of the reasons why he was bit. so distressed was because he had all of his stomach blown away. Yeah. And, and both barrels went off. Oh, that's so horrible. And so, yeah. you know, it was two shots straight into his... Straight into the middle of him. Yeah. And, that's uh, why so and that's why he was so distressed. But... Um, he he was he was not um, he he didn't he he didn't realise but he, you were and I don't know if you realised but you were holding your stomach while he was describing his death. Mm. If anybody who listens to this tape again, they'll see you doing it. Yeah. Mm. So he was actually demonstrating what the problem was. Yeah. Wow. Physically, while he was describing something completely different that he didn't want 
because he didn't want to accept what had actually happened. Isn't it? Yeah, well, it was almost like when he first came, all I could feel was this distress, babe. Yeah, he's, ter- he's terrified of his surrounds. And, and it was like he literally couldn't remember how he got where he is. No. And then at one point it was like he, when you told him to just breathe, then he remembered that he was out hunting or yeah. shooting and his yeah. mate dropped a gun. Yeah. So that was one big <coughs> realisation for him. And then over time then I felt him remember I got shot and I died. But it was like he hadn't even connected with that emotionally, no, that truth not at before all. then. Yeah. yeah. He was too terrified. He was reliving the event over in his mind. But also there was a projection of dark spirits at him as well mm. the whole time he's been there. So he's, he was terrified of them as well. So Because he, he's terrified. He, the, one of the fears that he has is a fear of ghosts or apparitions. Yeah. And that's what he had always surrounding him. A lot of that time yeah which increased his level of terror does that make sense yeah mm. so the questions i had for you were about the process of mediumship that i'm that yeah. I, so for me it's all feelings right yeah but you accurately and reflected what he wanted to say yeah which is what the, he wanted to connect to emotionally no and also right. what he wanted to say like even with the shooting he yeah. wanted to think it was that he wanted yeah. to have it over quickly. Yes. It wasn't over as quickly as he imagined. Yeah. Um, because it, imagining it in that state where he was in was too hard for him to do. So he wanted to manufacture another thing that happened. Does that make sense? Yeah. And but you accurately said what he what he wanted you to say, not yeah. not what you knew happened, which is actually yeah. the best way to do some mediumship because yeah. that's how you help the person a bit. Because you just, ref- well, the, all I'm trying to do is reflect what I'm feeling from them. Yeah. It, it, what they want to say to you, though, because there's other things. Like, I, I feel I know a lot of what happened in his childhood just because he felt about it when you talked about it. But Correct. He didn't say anything to you about it, so I don't, no, I don't say pretty, that. No, but it was pretty, and that's good because he didn't want to talk about that yeah. at that stage. And, and yeah. in the end, it would have been a digression anyway. But yeah. The reality is he had a pretty harsh childhood with his dad. Yeah. Right? His and dad yet he, was a drinker. And that he has more consideration of his father than his mother. Yeah. Which is interesting in itself too. Yeah. Because his attitude towards women is quite dismissive. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah he, it's like he really, in his childhood, he kind of latched onto this dad who was actually quite abusive and used to hit him and stuff. Yeah. He tried to get his dad's approval. Yeah. And that's how he set his life up as getting, doing everything for dad's, for approval, dad's approval, becoming a landowner, yeah. a station owner, a yeah. fairly big station from what I can... Yeah, it felt like that guy. to me yeah. too. Yeah, and cattle station. And yeah, whereas his dad had, didn't... Had ha- hardly anything. Yeah. And his dad was a war veteran mm-hmm. and that really had yeah. a big impact and part of why Mark respected his dad was that he'd been a veteran. Yes. Um, but also he knew about guns and he knew about other things, which often boys feel like this is how I get dad's approval. Yeah, of course. I engage, you know, I engage the manly things in order yeah. to get dad's approval. And dad also dismissed his wife quite significantly. So in order to get dad's approval, he, Mark, has to dismiss women generally. It's almost so, like he's but, almost, he dismisses them, but he's almost afraid of them. Oh, of course, And he yeah. judges them. It was yeah, a yeah, really strong yeah. feeling. He, he, he feels like the average guy in Australia in a lot of ways, which, which for a lot of guys in Australia, they have this sort of viewpoint. And I think a lot of men in the world do have the viewpoint that women can't be understood. So yeah. no matter what you try to do, you can't understand them. So it's pointless trying type of thing. You just got to make them happy. Let, let's got to either make them, you got to make them happy. If you can't make them happy, go out fishing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so hang on, I still got, I still didn't get to sure. my proper question. So yeah. I'm feeling the emotions. Yep. And I'm doing my best. Well, I'm not trying really no, to reflect them. No, he's you. You're open emotionally, so he's feeding you accurately the words he wants to stay. Yeah, so, so I'm not so. going to talk about the words now. Yeah. I'm going to talk about the emotion. Yeah. Because sometimes there's two ways I feel I still struggle with mediumship. Yeah. And one is to allow 
the full expression of their emotions and I don't know if a responsible medium does that or if it, I don't know what's the most loving way to do mediumship. No, I, felt, I felt you pretty accurately reflected or expressed his emotions. Yeah, and it was really, really hard for me. I was so nervous sitting down to do it because I could feel already he was there and I could feel how emotionally distressed he was and I felt yeah, if I even, connect to him. But even after his emotional distress, which you accurately reflected, yeah. Um, there are other fairly accurate reflections of his emotions. So, so is it... So that's good. I think it's good. So for me, that feels like in order to be, which is obvious, to be an excellent medium, yeah. I must allow the full, Expression. all of my emotions so that I don't have any limitation on their emotion. Yeah. If I'm not open, for example, to terror, yeah. then which even a spirit who's terrified can't really, I yeah. can't really reflect that properly, can I? Yeah, you wouldn't have been able to channel him like five years ago. No. Because he, he has had so much fear and you, you know, you've, you're not, you haven't been prepared to feel fear that, at that time. Yeah. And you would have just blocked it out straight away and he wouldn't have been able to express his fear through you. Yeah. And that would have caused a disconnection between him and you, then he couldn't express himself at all. Does well, that make sense? Yeah, and that's what, because the basis of my connection with the spirit is emotional, whereas some other mediums seem to have a different basis for connection. Well, no, see that it's more most more most other mediums have a guide yeah. who is who is second hand feeding information to them in a uh, in a like a relay in a re, as a yeah like a relay. So what's happening is they have a guide or a person who's their favourite person that they connect to. Often it's in codependent addiction with. And they have that person that they communicate with. And the other spirits who come, the guide reflects as much as the guide feels the person can handle mm. to the person on earth. And the person states all of those particular things. Does that make sense? And sometimes they get images or words rather Which, than feelings. Of Is course. That right? yeah. Of course. Well, that's why, why the mediums are often talk in images and sometimes very cryptic images. Yeah. Because the guide is trying to give them images based on their own understanding. Because the... Yeah. And the guide yes. has no intention in this case, and I wouldn't necessarily call them a guide, it's a spirit in codependent addiction, but the spirit in codependent addiction has no intention of having all that emotion from that other person yeah. go into their, into their charge, if you could call it, it that earth, way, on yes. earth. And so what they do is they relay a lot of the information. There's some of the information they can't relay without emotional content. So what they do is have pictures or have audio or those kind of things. And this is why channeling is very haphazard for the average person who channels, you know, they go, oh, yes, I think he's saying this, but he's, yeah. he's saying something about your dad and something yeah. about, you know, they're yeah. very, uh, very, like, lack definition and lack, lack definite yeah. statements because, because they're not actually connected to the actual spirit. Yes, and that's, I was talking to Lena and Igor about that earlier, about uh, Yeah, it was about like the, the person she, he saw, that, yeah, that Igor saw, yeah. she, she is only connected to her guide. She's not connected to any other spirit. It's her okay. guide giving her information. And again, like I said to you, it's not her guide. It's a co yeah. codependent addictive spirit with her who, who, who enjoys the feeding of information to her and her fame and a num yeah. number of other things. And so she, she gets fed all the information. But she, the reason why she's so indeterminate is because she's not actually connecting to the individual, number one. And secondly, she, she is unable to connect to the individual because she, she doesn't allow any emotional connection and that's the connection that occurs. Yeah. And she only has an emotional connection, thirdly, with her spirit who's managing her. So <laughs> when you say she's not connecting emotionally with the individual, you mean with the individual with, with spirit? With the spirit, the like, like, earth, yeah. like if it's your dad that she's got to talk to, yeah. well, she won't connect to your dad. No, she'll connect to Unless her, your dad's identical in emotion to her, she won't yeah. connect to, to your dad. Yeah. She'll connect to her guide. Her guide will talk, talk about your dad. He'll go and visit him, yeah. you know, find out how he's feeling. She hit the guy, the so-called guide, and it's wrong to call it a guide because yeah, it's yeah. really just a, a spirit who's managing the medium on earth. Yeah. The, the managing spirit will go and look at the, and relay the information. Yeah. But that managing spirit is just as detuned oftentimes emotionally as the medium themselves. Mm. And so it, it, the information is often quite haphazard and, and, mm. and not very, you know, accurate as a result. But uh, do you feel that there are some true guides that help mediums on Earth to, with that same relay thing? It's, it's very rare because the average medium on Earth is addicted to mediumship through, because they want glory yeah. or they want Their attention interest. or they want um, 
to be well known or, or have a sense of being knowledgeable correct or, yeah. and there's so many addictions involved for the average medium that that the average medium can't connect to a definitely not to a celestial guide mm -hmm. and even to a guide who's in a developed condition of love they can't connect to now there might be spirits around them who's trying to assist them to get to that point mm -hmm. but it's very very rare to find a medium that actually gets to that point yeah because because they're so in, so much in codependent addiction with their managing spirit yes so it's like a codependent uh, yeah. relationship on earth yeah so From what we've just said about the emotions, because I'm, I'm aware that I still have some per, some fear of judgment of others when I'm publicly emotional. Yeah. And so that is going to impact on my, like I feel when I'm just doing it with you, yeah. I'm pretty, I feel pretty, um, I just surrender to the process as much as possible yeah. and just allow their emotions to come through. And your mediumship in every case is accurate. Like, yeah. And it's accurate reflection, not necessarily what happened, but what they feel happened. Yeah. Do you see the difference? So it's a, it's a reflection of them and their feelings and their desires and all those things. Yes. So when I'm feeling them, I'm feeling what actually happened. Yeah. And that's why I can help them because I can feel not only what they're telling me happened yeah. or what they're trying to get me to ignore, yeah. but I can also feel all the things that, I, that, that they actually... Yeah. had happened yeah. and the things that they are trying to yeah. that they need to work their way through yeah. right yeah and it's good if the medium doesn't do that because because you're accurately re reflecting the person mm. uh, whereas i need to be able to connect to the person and accurately know the person yeah. in order to help them yeah so like i said sometimes i do get an awareness of the truth that they're not reflecting so yes. for example about the mum yes and I often also have a sense of other interactions, like Bob was talking to, to Mark yep. for a lot of that exchange. Of course, also. A, well, our speech is but, much slower than, yep. than his, and so he's, yep. he can fill in a lot of the gaps. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so he was helping to open him up or to yeah. help him clarify and things like that. But I don't reflect that because that's not what Mark, I feel like, it's just, it's not even like I'm connected to that. It's just like another... Well, what helps Mark get out of his condition is to have the interaction with with, with me. You. That's why it's happening. Yeah, and and him him having an interaction with Bob was only possible after the introduction. Yes. And even then, it's still not going to be possible under certain circumstances in the future because of his condition. And he resisted even seeing Bob for a long time. <coughs> mm -hmm. it, you know, well, you had to talk and talk and talk yeah. and yeah, yeah. Um, and one of Bob's part, one way Bob is you know, working through some of his compensatory effects, if you could say, is to actually help spirits who have passed in a similar condition to his own. Mm. Um, obviously, he enjoys to do that because he knows through his own experience um, what they're going to have to do to recover. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, again, this is more questions about mediumship per se yeah. and the most loving way to do it. So... Well, how you're doing you've it said, is the most loving way. Yeah, yeah but, but I have my internal um, uh, s questions about my process, I suppose, is what I'm saying. I don't think you need to... I think you need to worry less about it. All you need to do is allow your emotions to flow, yeah. but to not, to not become self-absorbed with those emotions. Well, that's the thing. Like, you know, we did the mediumship on the weekend that sadly wasn't recorded. As I was doing that mediumship, I be I cried a lot, you but did. I didn't feel like even it was necessarily my emotions. It, it was wasn't. resonant with my emotions. Yes, but it felt like, like after the the channeling was finished, I thought, yeah, now I really need to process a lot of those emotions, and really, yes. I don't feel that I did, or I, I did, agree. It I was agree. really her, but emotions. you did allow them. Yeah, well, this is one reason why you you know why you try to avoid mediumship because you. Because cause you know mm. that the only way you're going to be a good medium is by allowing their emotions to flow. And if, if under the, law, the way the law of attraction works, obviously there's going to be certain spirits that are attracted to you that also have your own emotions. Yeah. So, so... Yeah, so if know, I'm close, like, which is the first point, if I'm close to my own down, emotions, yeah. yeah, that's why. Yeah. And that's because I'm more open to some of those emotions that that young girl was expressing yeah. on the weekend than I... I allowed that connection quite strongly. Yeah, very accurate. 
Yeah. It was very accurate. And she also uh, was a bit more accurately reflecting what happened to her. Yeah, uh, although so when she first came, she wasn't, was she? she no, was, no, yeah. there was a complete... And this is where... I'm, that's my role. My role is to feel what she's actually feeling. So she came to us on the weekend saying that she just wanted to be happy and she just wanted to help people on earth be happy and so forth. Yeah. And in the end, within a very short period of time, she was crying her heart out yeah. <laughs> because of how she'd been treated by her mother. She'd miscarried and her mother had caused the miscarriage through her, you know, projections at the child. Yeah. And, and how she, that child had had 30-something years, 35 years of basically torment from her mother yeah. Her mother's projections of of the child's unworthiness yeah. uh, entering the child, and and I could feel that, mm. you, and and therefore I could raise the conversation, and then talk yeah. about that particular problem, yeah, and absolutely. then that caused the subsequent discussion. Yeah. Um, but you, this is what I'm saying. Like you don't have to worry about what's right and what's wrong in your channeling. Well, All you've got to do is just channel accurately what they're saying yeah. or what they believe is right and wrong. Because that's, so that's the two major blocks I feel I have with being just like... I see I'm not very confident in my mediumship even now. I still, yeah. Yeah, I still feel like it could be way, way, way better. Yeah. Um, one of them is the emotional openness. Yeah. And the second one is my fear of getting it wrong. And yeah, and no, there's also another one: the per perception of public opinion. Yeah, f uh, being there's a quite crazy a baby. there's a number yeah. of, and the feeling that you're crazy is another yeah. one that affects you at times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you do it, so there's a number of different. But I really notice perceptibly when I can be right in the flow, and then you'll say, "Where is it? What year is it? What?" It? And I have to. I'm really practicing because immediately a fear is triggered in me of I'm going to get this wrong and I'm um, and and it can break my connection with them. So really, these last few times, just practicing what is the feeling they're giving me. Yeah, and when your fear comes up and you don't feel it, that's when you shut down their accurate communication. Yeah. Like he didn't know the day he died, but. But when I asked, once we got over the actual initial shock, yeah. I asked him, what day does he think it is today? Yeah. Bang, it was yeah. there. And, and he could you know, he could tell us the names of his children and so yes. forth. Uh, we probably should have got his last name, but, yeah. um, but it doesn't really matter in the end. But um, at the end of the day, you could even verify all of that information if you wanted to. Well, that's, what um, I, that's how good I want my mediumship to be, is mm. that I have first, last names, dates, everything that can be verified. But I feel like it's a double-edged sword because I, I'm so afraid of getting it wrong. I rarely get it right, or I, that's my perception. Yeah, I don't agree with that. But, yeah. but I also feel part of the issue is that some of the spirits falsify that information. Yeah. So you can you can only say what they want you to say. That's what an accurate medium would do. Yeah. You can't, and then I can feel whether they just told a lie or not, and we can focus on it if we have to, you know what I yeah. mean, or if it's important in the moment. But um, you're far better off just saying what they want. You're far better off just saying what they want you yeah. to say to maintain the contact with them so that, so that the discussion can ensure to a point that benefits them. You mm. see what I'm saying? Like, I was just remembering that when we when we were getting ready to start, yeah. you know, I just ask what spirits are around and I try to tune in to whoever's there and and a name. And I'm sure Rachel's helping me with that. Yeah. But it was really interesting. What I got was two names and I've just realised that the second name was the name of his son. Mm. And it was either his name was Mark Jeffries or Jeffrey Marks yeah. or something like this. Yeah. And that, uh, and yet his name was Mark and his son's name was Jeff. Yeah. Mm. And be because I'm so emotional, it's all about the feelings and feelings, I find it hard to get a, a concrete name. Like it feels almost like I have to think about it. Yeah. Whereas when I open up more, it just is there when you ask the question because it's them, I suppose. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, they're answering the question, not you then. Yeah. And when I also... You're, see, when you get all uh, concerned about the accuracy, yeah. you're shutting down them giving you an accurate answer. That's what I feel one of my major blocks in mediumship is, yeah. is that personal fear of getting... It wrong. It wrong or being cra perceived as crazy. Yeah. Those things yeah. 
stop my connection with them yeah. which and then they can't accurately give it and then you have the perception you're crazy which is the actual law wrong. of attraction yeah. working perfectly yeah, yeah. to That's trigger the emotion yeah yeah and i'm also aware as you said that i've avoided mediumship for uh, nearly two years because of some emotion that i didn't want to yeah face you know yeah and well some yeah. of that was crazy wasn't it the crazy thing yeah definitely yeah just feeling like i've yeah, no, I, I feel every time we've done mediumship, even years ago, you've been pretty accurate. You've been very accurate when reflecting their particular statements and feelings. Not as accurate when it comes to knowing what actually happened, but that's because they, you're connected to their statements and feelings. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. And that's, that's okay, I feel. In fact, that, that's a good thing. Yeah. Because then I'm, I'm talking to the person and what they want to believe, not... Yeah. What I'm the beauty of um, me being able to feel what they actually feel yeah. is that I can go, like, oh, there's another problem, there's another problem, there's another problem. I can feel all the problems, yeah. and then it's a matter of feeling, well, which one of those problems are the most important ones for those particular spirits to deal with yeah. before we can address, you know, the issues we need to address. Yeah, you have you kind of identifying their blocks of truth, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's an automatic sort of a process, but yeah. because you can feel them. Yeah. You can identify and feel what's happened in their life and everything. You can identify, okay, like with the ones on the weekend, I could feel, yes, you know, we've got to address this issue of this unhappiness that's present there inside mm. of them based on their mother's projections um, that they were trying to overcome by just saying, oh, we've come to you because we want to have a happy time and do some <laughs> happy things. Yeah, and, well, that was yeah. a really funny one for me on the weekend because they literally came along, group of like ch girl children girls who had been miscarried yeah yeah and they really presented to me as we're happy and we want to help others and that's really i went into it feeling like no this is who we're talking to and whammo you just started talking to them and within a couple of minutes well five minutes maybe yeah. um their real emotions were exposed and it was quite yeah and it, that one kind of they also spent a good solid hour crying really in in amongst the discussion in amongst didn't they? the discussion yeah yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. which benefits them greatly. Takes me out of left of field sometimes. Yeah, like in that I don't have any expectation or anticipation. He had even less. I didn't even have a name with them. Yeah. Whereas today I tried to get a name before yeah. we started. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. the beauty of doing it that way though is that you get an accurate reflection of the of the spirit's feelings, in sense of you're portraying to me what they're trying to portray to me. Yeah. which is exactly what n it needs to occur if you're going to help them. Yeah. And then I need to be able to feel what they're not portraying to me, but is that what is actually real. Yeah. So quite often spirits come to talk to us and I say, no, you're not that at all, you're this and rah, 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 and off you go. Yeah. And, that, and, that's, and that because we can do that because I can feel who they really are and you're just accurately reflecting what they want us to believe, yeah. which, is, which is good. Actually, that's what a proper, to me, that's what a proper medium would do. Well, I, that's what I feel my, that's my job is really yeah. just to give voice to someone and to not sugarcoat or, or do, judge or judge or hurry them up or try yeah. to yeah. say what I think they should say or anything like that. I just feel yeah. like my job is reflect what they feel. Yeah, and if you're and if you're honest about your mediumship, you won't be trying to modify. The truth for the listener you you will be accurately reflecting only what the spirit is saying that's mm. it mm. and if the spirit's telling a lie you'll tell a lie in that moment you know it's obviously not your lie yeah you're just you're just honoring the spirit through the process you know and sometimes spirits come and say thing, you know, nasty things or whatever and and i go well no that's what they want to say so let's get on with it you know what i mean like i'm okay with that yeah um you know, whereas a lot of mediums will go, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, to me, to me, if you want to help a person, you've got to accurately reflect their true condition rather than their facade. Yeah. And if you're maintaining a facade in yourself, which you don't do with mediumship, but a lot of mediums do do. Yeah. Then that's no good either. Yeah. Yeah. So you've mm. just got to be willing to be very honest. But this, I suppose, this emotional aspect to the mediumship. That's not something that I see other worldly mediums reflecting. They don't reflect no. much emotion. Well, when that's they, because they're being um, spirit managed with, by one, one spirit. Yeah. 
That's why, because they're not actually connected to the person they say they're channeling. Yeah. So, you know, they say they're channeling their mother or father or whatever, but it's very, very rare that, you know, the, like that's what I like about the book, you know, 30 Years Among the Dead. Yeah. His wife actually channeled the actual spirit and yeah. said exactly what the actual spirit said yeah. and wasn't, and, and the wife wasn't being managed by a go-between. Yeah. Right? And there were times when there was a go-between there for assistance, but... She wasn't being managed by that go-between. Yeah, there wasn't an established, pre-established codependence that she was getting an addiction met with yeah. the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I don't have much experience with worldly mediums, though, either. Like, I don't really well, I haven't, I haven't seen that many. Well, I have a huge amount of experience, but the ones that I've spent <laughs> time with. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, yeah. you know, I don't see many of them. Well, if you examine, you know, other people's mediumship, quite often they're very, very rigid. There's no emotion at all. There's no, it's just talking very, you know, very, um, what you'd call almost blank yes. speech. Um, and a lot of that is because they're being managed by a spirit who's managing them, yeah. who's relaying information to them. Yeah. It's, it's not, they're not actually connecting to the original person. They're just rela getting relayed messages. But sometimes they can be quite accurate, can't they? In of course. That, um, if they've, if got, they've a, got a good rapport with that with managing, the managing spirit. spirit and that managing spirit is getting factual information, then... Then, of course, it'll they, be factual. Yeah. But it doesn't mean it's benefited the original spirit. And this is this other thing that I notice is that a lot of mediumship seems to focus on assisting the people on earth rather than people on earth. I know that's not all mediums because I know some mediums do help spirits who are... Yeah, in, but the, uh, the majority of mediums do it for people on earth because they get their addiction. addictions met through the people on earth. Yeah. yeah. That's why they do it for the people on earth. Yeah. They don't do it for spirits because, you know, the spirits can only say thank you in the end, <laughs> generally. If, it's if a they, pretty nice If they feel you. like thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, I just, I think that sometimes uh, in the past, especially, I've found mediumship tiring. And I think that's because. Because you're fighting your emotions. I'm fighting my emotions, fighting the fear of getting it wrong, yep. fighting the fear of it being perceived as being crazy. That yep. They're my three major things. Yeah. And. Anybody who finds mediumship. That, it, that creates because uh, you're in, internally trying to do the job but fighting those feelings. Yeah, you, and it's the fighting of your feelings that causes the tiredness. It's the same in your day-to-day -day life, though. It is. If you fight your feelings, you get tired. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I think that that's three of my major issues in day-to-day -day life as well. <laughs> yeah. And, Overwhelming emotion, being crazy, and yeah. what was the third one? Oh, getting no. it wrong, getting it wrong. wrong. Yeah. yeah. But... Um, yeah, if you if you don't fight your emotions with the spirits, then obviously they can communicate better. But also, um, you you you're in the state where you're not blocking their communications, yeah. and and also you can be more accurate in your reflection of what they're really saying. Yeah. So that's why I enjoy doing mediumship with it because it, it's um, I feel the spirit pretty accurately, mm. probably more accurately than you do at this point, um, but. Um, I also feel what you're saying is also very accurate based on what they want me to know. To say, yeah. Based on what they want me to think and know. Mm. And, and it's easy then for me to tell the difference yeah. between those two states. So it's easy for me to help them when I need, you know, with whatever help we can give. Yeah. You are very uh, against channeling large groups of spirits, though. Yeah. So there's obviously something going on there. Yeah, I wonder what You're focusing your attention more on smaller groups of spirits and there's quite large groups of spirits who want to communicate. Yeah. Um, Again, I think that is a bit about, uh, one, a feeling of being feeling overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, but also there's a feeling of, as you know, I still want to remain pretty insignificant. <laughs> yeah. And when I, if I was involved in helping a huge group of spirits in the spirit world, or something like that, I feel it's more of a significant thing and uh, what if I get it wrong and you know, I'm not we're up to that and, I, I, you know, it's better for another medium to do that kind of, you know, uh, all my kind of yeah. lack of self-confidence, Yeah, I think. Yeah. Well, I don't feel it's a lack of self-confidence. Uh, the lack of self-confidence is caused by you hooking too much into other people's opinions. 
Yeah. So, so whether it's the opinions of those groups of spirits or the opinions of people who are listening to the mediumship, you're hooking into one or the other mm. rather than just accurately channeling the material that's given to you. So the bigger the group, the more self-conscious you become, not because that you're self-conscious, more, it's more that you're worried about other people's opinions of you. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's the same thing about fear of others. And I've been looking at that emotionally, the desire to hold on to a poor opinion of myself in an effort to placate people that people I fear who will attack potentially attack from. you. Because I'm way out of harmony with God's truth. Yes. In that I'm still, after all this time, refusing to believe that I'm like worthy and loved and lovable by yeah. God. Yeah. So there's a big reason for that, and it's yeah. the fear of what's going to happen if I really. It's, it's funny too. You have the emotion of wanting to be acknowledged, but you don't want to be acknowledged by too many people. <laughs> I think I just want to be acknowledged because by, that's not being attacked. It's almost like, yeah. I don't want the opposite. I only want to be acknowledged. acknowledged by a small group of friends. <laughs> type, pretty much. Type of thing. That's pretty and, much. And in the end, like, sure, a lot of the things we channel are going to challenge a lot of people. And initially, there, there might not be very much acknowledgement for the channeling. But, but in the long run, people will start to see firstly what is involved in being a proper medium rather than you know, doing what the average person does, which is, like I said, spirit management of the individual, relaying a lot of second or third hand information. Yeah, I think I've often put that type of mediumship, no, it doesn't make much sense, but internally I've felt that that's more worthy, or better mediumship than what I'm just sitting here having a cry and saying a bunch of things is sort of how I judge it internally. Yeah, it's much more inaccurate. Yeah like every medium that I've ever seen doing that, has always been much more inaccurate. And you've got to interpret based on your feelings from the spirit what's actually going on. Mm. So a lot of times I've heard mediums talking about whole things and I'm going, no, it's not what's going on because I can feel what's actually going on. Yeah. And this is what's actually happening. But their spirit manager yeah. is telling them a whole heap of things based on what their spirit management manager understands about what's going on yeah and often the spirit manager is not much better conditioned than the medium themselves and usually that's a first fear condition yeah. and so they don't very know very much no, of what's no. going on and they certainly can't feel the emotional reasons why it's going on yeah. so yeah and the, the huge channel challenge i think with channeling celestial spirits divine truth guides even is that their whole mode of operating is not just emotional it's through the emotion of love yeah and when i'm blocked or to love when, to love then it's hard then it's really hard yeah. i'm fighting their love while i'm trying to receive their messages yeah and that, that's very hard then yeah. to receive like w accurately what exactly what they want to say but see again the average person on earth doesn't channel celestial spirits at all they channel a yeah that's they channel a and go between yeah um and even then most of the times the go-between is not going to a celestial spirit no. in my No, a lot of times they're just using using celestial spirit terminology yeah. to to give the person on earth the opinion that they're channeling a celestial spirit. Yeah. Because the reality, unless you're very, very open emotionally, you won't be able to channel any celestial spirit. So Well, and the times that I have you know, recently, six months or so ago probably when I did make a single connection that was based on love, I just cried for three yeah. quarters of an hour. I didn't have, I couldn't say anything because yeah. that's my one block with yeah. him and God. Yeah. 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 And with Padgett, the reason why he had a pretty good emotional connection with myself was because he believed in Jesus and he believed, you know, yeah. in a lot of the Christian things, but he did, couldn't accept Christianity as it was. And so I had a lot of connection with him, particularly over the first four years, because he believed um, so it was a lot about his faith desire and or, faith and yeah. belief yeah. and rather than uh, and he had emotional connection because he just experienced the death of his wife so he had the emotional that was connection crucial for him that really yeah. he, he suddenly lost his wife i feel he felt he'd kind of hadn't expressed his love for her as much as Correct. he felt he had regrets and guilt and and he became suddenly very lonely and this opened him up yeah. and made him a medium basically yeah. of good clarity. But then over the years, uh, over the years that followed, he slowly down closed again. down again yeah. um, yeah. until four years or five years later, he yeah. was closed again and completely yeah. unable to be communicate any accurate material at all. Yeah. 
So, because he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't deal with or address the emotional problems. Mm. And so that's why he closed down. But, yeah. but uh, yeah. yeah, there's not too many people on the earth that, that I can see that channel any celestial spirits whatsoever, particularly because they are completely closed emotionally to them. Yeah. yeah, this emotional openness thing, I think that's the thing that I, yeah, yeah, I fear judgment from other people, but that's the only way I can connect to a spirit is emotionally. Yeah. You know, I yeah. don't have that other go-between person. Yeah, often when you believe you're better, you'll do a better job, you do a worse job yeah. because you're not as emotionally connected and you feel more stable In control, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to be able to control this and yeah. prevent attack and all yeah. the sort of false beliefs. Yeah. 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 Thanks, yeah, honey. Good, Thanks for answering my questions. Yeah. Mm. Love you. Love you.